Welcome back for part two of our exclusive interview with Iraq's ambassador to the United Nations. Jonathan Roth, the senior producer of this program, is the interviewer. I'm back with His Excellency Hamed Al Bayadi, Iraq's ambassador to the United Nations. He's joining me from Columbia University in New York. Ambassador, just before the break, uh, I'm just I brought up the fact that Iran's ongoing nuclear program is certainly a concern here in the West. Uh, where does Iraq stand on that issue? Iraq is part of the Arab League, and the Arab League adopted a policy of uh, Middle East free of um, free zone of all kind of WMD, especially nuclear weapons. Therefore, we believe that the whole Middle East should be free of all kind of nuclear weapons. So. In, from your perspective, you do not, if, if, Ara if Iran is certainly developing a nuclear weapons program, you are not on side with that? Yes, of course. We are against nuclear weapons owned by any country in the region. And we think that um, any weapons will affect Iraq as a, a country, an important country, especially Iran. We have long borders with Iran, and that would be um, devastating for Iraq. Now. We all know that Iran seems to be continuing its program no matter what the West seems to be doing. Uh, if the United States would ever request uh, flyover rights over Iraq to invade uh, Iran or bomb Iran, would Iraq allow that? No, definitely not. We announced, the government announced that they would not allow any foreign forces to use Iraq as a, or the airspace as a land or an airspace to attack any other country in the region. Iran is saying that they have a nuclear program for peaceful means, which is the right of any country uh, who is a member in the NPT. And for us, we think that this file should be solved through peaceful means rather than war or attack. So do you support the current um, sanctions regime that the United States seems to be pushing? Well, we, part, we are part of the UN, and uh, we suffered from sanctions in Iraq. And we believe sanctions will not affect anything. We believe in peaceful means to solve the problem. And I think there were negotiation in the past between you know, um, the uh, European and the P5 uh, plus Germany with Iran. That would be a good way forward. But let's get down to brass tacks here, because this, this dispute has been ongoing now, you know, dating back to the Clinton administration. Um, there seems to be no question that Iran is continuing its program no matter what the West says. So sooner or later, we all know this is going to come to a head. Um, if sanctions don't work, if uh, a peaceful discussion between the West and Iran simply can't work, what should be done in your estimation? Well, if you're talking about negotiations since Clinton time, Iran several times um, agreed to freeze all kind of enrichment, but the whole world um, turned a blind eye and they left the situation. They didn't um, continue or pursue um, the negotiation. So it's not one side. I think the West is looking from um, their angle. And you have, in politics, you have to look from um, um, different angles. The, you have to have the whole picture. And we don't think that um, a military solution will be good for Iraq, for the region, or for the world. All right, I just want to turn back the clock here quickly and talk a little bit about the actual uh, invasion and occupation of Iraq. Because it seems like you, know, you search the internet and you try to get a figure in terms of how many civilians have actually been killed in Iraq due to the war. And the numbers range anywhere from 70,000 to 1.2 million. What is the official number from the government of Iraq? And whatever that number happens to be, is the human toll, has it been worth it in your estimation? Well, Saddam caused the, the death of millions of people. We had two wars against neighboring countries in 10 years' time. Saddam used chemical weapons against the Iraqi people in the north, in the center, and the south. And then he continued to challenge uh, the whole world, the United Nations, and to threat many countries in the region. So if Saddam continued in power, we could have more wars. And after the invasion and the liberation of Kuwait, he mobilized his troops against the Kuwaiti borders again in 1994. He tried to assassinate George Bush 
uh, George H.W. Bush in Kuwait in 1994. And then he support Al-Qaeda. Abu Mus'ab al-Zarqawi, the leader of Al-Qaeda, was in Iraq. And he conducted an assassination against a U.S. high-ranking diplomat in Jordan called Lawrence Foley. Therefore, if Saddam continue to rule Iraq, we will see much more casualties in Iraq and in the region. Hmm. Okay, now uh, I have two quick questions for you. Um, oil has always been seen as the primary motivator in terms of why the United States invaded Iraq. Since uh, the Iraqi government has taken power uh, in Baghdad, uh, you folks have been handing out contracts to oil companies, and seemingly not always to oil companies that you would say are Western. Uh, you know, contracts have been handed out to Indian oil companies, to Chinese oil companies. Have you ever personally experienced any bitterness in terms of the way that has gone from the Americans? I don't think the oil was a motive behind the war. Otherwise, Saddam could sell oil to the United States and to the West in much cheaper uh, prices than anybody else. Saddam wanted to stay with any price. He was ready to give the oil of Iraq, the whole of Iraq, with cheaper prices. And if America want to buy the oil of Iraq, they could buy it with the money they spent on the war for many, many years. So I don't think the oil was the motive, but it was Saddam, rug regime, and who challenged all the international community, the United Nations resolutions, and threatening peace and security in the region and the world. Therefore, um, the oil being in Iraq being distributed to many countries, including the U.S., uh, 15 contracts uh, were signed in December, and including some U.S. companies, but com companies from different parts of the world, East and West, had uh, awarded these uh, contracts according to the best bid they gave to the Iraqi government in a, trans in a transparent way in front of the media, in front of the officials, in front of the judicial uh, officials. That was the best uh, decision Iraq can take about oil and its future. Okay, lastly, one quick question for you. What do you expect to happen here in Iraq over the next year? Well, we expect to have a national unity government, a strong government, which live in peace uh, with its people and its neighbors, and uh, rebuild Iraq. We need to rebuild Iraq. We need services. The whole infrastructure was destructed during Saddam regime because of the wars and Saddam's policies. So hopefully the new government will be strong enough to provide services to Iraqi people. Hmm. Thank you, Ambassador al -Bayadi. My best to you. Most welcome. Thank you. More of The Standard in just a moment.